you see how much the art it's gross and changing with the religion, not changing, same with the religion. This is, I make uh, an exhibition of this piece, telling that nobody comes from nothing. We are, all of us, basing on some foundation. Our roots, they are common. For that, from long time, I am trying to work. And our title of uh, our presentation it was how cultural heritage can be tool for dialogue and peace. And I believe really in this. Because when you understand from where you come, what you have in your heritage, you will respect the others. It's working in the past, but for the future. The past is the foundation of the future. Sharing partnership. Local community is important. Partnership. Without them, we cannot do a lot. And we learn a lot of them. Not that professional people can know everything, but what they, they know, the local people, the local communities, they know more than us. Building capacity. In a building in a country like Palestine, that's still not country, the most important thing is that to invest in people. Money cannot do country. People can build the country. For that, it's very important <coughs> to invest in the people and to increase their capacities. Investing in public awareness, this activity especially <coughs> for the boys, and improving visiting experience. We are famous that we are tourists. And a lot of people, they are afraid to come to us. And they are afraid to come to visit our places. But who is coming, he is here. They are welcome, and they need an experience. And we create places, guest houses, where people can come, sleep, enjoy, without TV. You have to go outside and enjoy with the people, too. At the same time, they pay, pay us some money. I work uh, from a long time. Our, our staff, most of them, they are Muslims. But we have it, no problem. And just I go through from the most important project that we made, Gethsemane Church. It's very famous. Uh, Church, uh, and we restore it, we make training, the Holy Sepulchre, <coughs> the synagogue, and uh, I can tell you that when we made the restoration of the synagogue, of I need you, it was during the Intifada, that all the area were closed, that our young people, they were closed, in their area. They cannot move, they cannot see their families, but they participate in restoring the, the synagogue, the, the person that they are making our life more difficult. And when I explain to my student in that time why we are doing this, I said, this is synagogue, it is in Palestine, and it's made part of the history of Palestine. We have had no problem with the religion. Maybe we have problem with the political situation, but not with the religion. And we really work and was. This is another experience in small village in, 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 in Palestine. From our excavation, we found pottery different 
poetry from Islamic period and to Shinda's period. And this is it was if it, we were in conflict in that time, it was time of war, but in the same time there is remains. And from this uh, uh, small pottery that we founded, we create a laboratory to make a copy of design or bringing the colors that uh, we created. And I can tell you that it is has a big success for not just because we do this project, but because for years they are really getting salaries. That this our goal that how cultural heritage can give us benefits, social, cultural, educational, but at the same time, uh, economic A lot of visits we do with it for all the places that we are working in to bring, especially the student, closer to their cultural heritage, to know this and respect. This is an uh, artwork that uh, we make it in the mosaic center. And as you see, it's present Sultan Malik al Hakim al Ayyubi and San Francisco. Now, this is important meeting that now it is. 800 years old. This year, um, from this meeting, it's 800 years. We make this artwork to remember this meeting. In that time, 800 years ago, it was the fourth crusaders. And in Damiat, they were the army. The crusaders army on one side, and the Muslims are in that other side, ready to fight. San Francisco, he decided to go and to talk with Sultan. And he, they, everybody in that time, they call him that he is crazy. And he had to go because he will be killed if a sultan met him. But when he reached sultan, he guessed him for not just one day, he stayed more than a week talking. We didn't know really what they talk, but the information that we have that everybody were talking about his religion. From this meeting, the only people, Christian, Latin Christian, in the Holy Land, just the Franciscan dialogue. It was more efficient than the war. And they gave them the possibility for the Franciscan to stay in the Holy Land until now. From this meeting, and with, from this dialogue, you can change the history. I believe that the dialogue, it can be a big, important tool to have to live in peace. But it is something that we have to do with everybody. They do with it in moments, not in peace. The moment of this meeting, it wasn't in peace, it was in war. But this important two person, because they are courage, they change the history. Thank you very much. Presentation and then we'll open the floor for questions, discussions, reflections.
So good evening, everybody. As well, um, um, to say, yeah, I'm happy today. Uh, I'm really happy to be here, but I'm also terribly afraid to kind of disappoint you. Um, I wish um, I prepared some notes. I prepared some uh, works to share with you, and I wish I can I can go directly to the subject or the question that we are here, or why we are here, and uh, to make finally sense. Uh, but mm -hmm. okay. yeah, yeah. But uh, before to start, I want to say that uh, I want to quote um, Ignosh Abel, which known in the Western um, uh, kind of uh, literature as Abel um, um, He's known also in, in Europe as the commentator of um, Platon and Aristotle, and he. Uh, Common in one um, 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 the, the Republic of Platon, he does a comment saying that um, um, regarding what to what Platon said, he said that women uh, are also able or capable to go do as men do. So um, I said this in uh, as we were talking about um, um, the commonality. Um, Say uh, can space pieces, but all this talk cannot exist without um, the contribution of everybody. So uh, I came back again, and, uh, and before I start, also I want to say that the fact that I'm speaking English or the fact that we are talking in English should be considered as something innocent. If we're talking about uh, um, the root of Phoenician and the uh, common space uh, and you like a certain commonality in the Mediterranean region, uh, we should question the, the language. Uh, why I said that? Because uh, maybe sometime in Europe um, um, or today English is used as a lingua franca uh, which is not the case. Linga Franca, Linga Franca in Europe was in the in the time where, but no no country was speaking this language. Uh, but today, um, neither the south, neither the north of of, of Mediterranean uh, speaks this this language, and we all know which country it speaks. So I uh, suggested to reflect this and to not consider it as something innocent. عن نخلي بحال مريح يعنق النار حاجمي as the 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 wind hugs to do to the to the fire So I, I titled um, um, like my, my presentation as uh, crisis of hospitality, crisis of representation. So uh, what I wanted to say um, regarding the, our meeting today, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from Marrakech, which is a place bit, uh, situated near the Atlas. Atlas is the mountain that continues from the south uh, of the North Africa and continue to the um, um, touch Algeria a bit Mediterranean. Uh, Atlas means um, uh, in the Anazir local culture or the Libyan culture, it means where the, the sun is at the, but um, 
Atlas also it's a figure of uh, the Greek mythology. So um, here um, I want to use this photo to start my talking. Um, it's a, a painting. Uh, I traveled last year to Madrid and I went to Prado and I discovered this um, crazy, like interesting painting um, called Hercules fighting Antaeus. Um, why this painting? First, Hercules uh, for me is a figure of uh, not only the Western Greek mythology, but it's also a figure of uh, or the archive of exploration, movements, uh, and connection uh, to uh, between the Greek and how the Greeks how they see themselves and in relationship to the outside of the, the polis, which is the barbers, the berbers, all the people that are not civilized. People. But uh, in Hebrew is also the idea of, um, um, this is how I will make the link between exploring and colonizing. The Ant Antius, he's known as, like, as the, the, the son of Gaia, as the son of the land. And I think you may know this, um, episode of the travels of uh, Hercules when he meets uh, Antaeus. Um, the poem of Ovid Metaph Metamorphosis tells us that um, uh, Antaeus is known to get his power from the land. So when he touches the land, he gets more powerful. Um, I think this point of touching the land, being connected to the land, to the earth, uh, to the mother, um, as something symbolically which makes sense later in my talk. Um, the, 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 the funny thing about the story then that it tells us only um, that uh, wrestling, that Antius he wrestled all the strangers that comes across in North Africa. Uh, we actually also in, in the north of Morocco we, are, we have a, a, like an archaeological site uh, that is connected to Antius and it's called the, the cemetery of um, uh, Antar. We call it Antar in Morocco. Um, so my question is like, um, uh, where the, the, the gesture of wrestling is a gesture of wrestling, it's a gesture of rejecting, being in hospital to the others, and when the gesture again of the hand become a hug and become a welcoming. Um, here I'm, I'm using an extremely, for me, violent painting uh, that is uh, uh, related to the place, also to Malta. And as you know, also I think everyone is really familiar to the, the, the beheading of the Saint John. Um, and I want just to add another element uh, that I'm reflecting on is um, uh, the relationship to what happened today, this post-colonial form of miscommunication, misunderstanding uh, between people, um, how it find the truth in first the idea of going from the exploration to colonization, but also the symbolic of the hidden of the head of Saint John. I believe that the action here is not only um, uh, about telling a story of um, like Herodot and Saint John, but also the action uh, of the hidden of taking the head and in somehow when we saw all the painting that Caravaggio done after that, we found that. There is always take the idea of taking uh, the head, and the head symbolically is connected to, to the mind, to the thinking, to the culture, etc. Um, but also to some form of masculinity. And uh, um, just like to make it more comp complicated, um, what relationship could have the behaving of Saint John, the uh, the transportation of Christianity from Jerusalem as a center to the Rome. What, what this does to the history of Mediterranean. And how we can connect to the current, um, let's say, um, 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 narratives about who is the East. Um, um, 
here maybe we can say something about the idea of orientalism and this idea of how we represent and how we see the people from outside of Europe or the people coming from the East. As always, we have this image of the violence, the cruelty that was transmitted through Caravaggio. I want to add a point that Caravaggio is really a starting point also in terms of art history. And we can we find Rembrandt in, in more in the north, and everyone knows the stories. And then in Spain, we have also... Um, Goya. Yeah, Goya. Thank you. Um, uh, so, uh, I believe, or I think that the idea or the, 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 the problem started with representing, with the image that we produce on the other one, the image that we have on, on, on the past, the image that we have, uh, that we use to mourn, to choose to mourn, and images of the unmoored, the people that cannot be moored. In this moment, uh, I want just to make more complete, compli complication or make it more complicated. Um, what feeling we have when we see all this shit, all these people that try um, um, to cross the Mediterranean and die, and how we see them in the, in the television, in CNN, etc. By the way, this, this image is taken from the website of CNN. So, um, um, I want to just add a small point about representing as a crisis. Representing first, it's not only, you know, in Europe, the idea of representation. It's a very politically charged idea. All the activism, like feminist activism, goes through representation. But also, um, uh, minorities also fight for their representation. And if today, we have a crisis of hospitality, of accepting. It's about um, a, a crisis of representation of the other. Which, I have heard this idea of, yeah, let's make together, let's put the East and the West. I want to come back to this painting. The, 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 the thing that they use, the techniques that um, Francisco Zorbarani is the car Carvalho of Spain, the techniques that they use, it's the contrast between the black and, and black, but also seeing two, one from Greek, from Athena, and one from North Africa fighting. This is translated later to the dialectic, and we can connect it to the dialectic of, um, let's say, legal, historian, dialectic, etc. So I believe that in my action is a form also of. Uh, um, um, decolonizing the idea of dialectics. Because if we see the dialogue, it's not about when we see dialogue, we are in separation. We are in two forms. And I think here we lose everything. That um, there is no, it's, it's, it's again like um, seeing the light in the other side, but it's not a light of hope, it's a light of hopelessness. It's the light of the train that is approaching us. Um, I wanted, so if I, I, I become um, uh, unpolite to take more time. So I wanted just to select to think as an artist also, uh, because it's about thinking, but it's about also acting. So when I heard also Phoenician, um, this, yeah, the, like first people that comes and try to have this utopia of creating a common. Um, Mediterranean up beyond the domination. I think that Phoenician also invented um, uh, commerce, they invented uh, the flows, invented in somehow capitalism, etc. Um, and the other side, I want to say when uh, I was talking about, in the beginning, about Antius and Hercules, it was about uprooting. Um, in my work, I, I try to uh, use the word of radicalize, which I give the sense of rooting, even the roots again, or putting it in, in the earth again. Um, so this photo that you see now, it's my, uh, it was my intervention in, uh, in Marrakesh some uh, months ago about the idea of 
the gift? What does it What does it mean to give to the passerby? What does it mean to uh, put food uh, or to share something? But this sharing or this giving is impersonal. What does it mean? And how we can uh, use like we can explore. I don't know, I'm afraid to use, to use the word explain it, but uh, what does it mean to um, um, put in it in an artist's context? Art as action also, who is this as action? It's a... Sorry. Um, I think um, I should uh, stop here and uh, I will thank you very much. I would like to open the floor. There's been a lot of thoughts and, and images, and all the presentations are very rich. And I would like to invite um, people present here to see. Okay, there's one question here. Uh, well, actually, um, I'm a big station that uh, you know, the Phoenicians were here. We speak the uh, Arabic. No, it's a Semitic language. Uh, okay, no, no, no. Uh, please. Let's, let's give time to each other to, uh, to express our ourselves language. and... Yes, and it's a specific language. Uh, the, the Arabic, uh, I think, uh, had an influence by the uh, Phoenician language, if I'm right. Arabic is a Semitic language as well. Yes. But if I go to the... Uh, uh, I read some of the uh, Punic Phoenician grammar, Melek is a king, Sultan, Hakam is a ruler. There are a lot of uh, similarity uh, uh, between Arabic uh, and uh, Samitin and Aramaic as well. Uh, what I need to say, and I've got to make this very clear, the Latin letters are coming from the Greek, are coming from the diffused uh, phonetic letters from the Venetians. We are the only ones in Malta that we speak a Semitic language and we use the letter uh, coming from the uh, Venetians. This is a conclusion. Yes. Because the A is the Aleph is a Ka. B is Beit Beta. The Dahla to come in. Her defense height, Ita. M is Ilma, water. Nene Ainun Morda was the island of fish. And the, the form of Mort as a fish. So, did the Phoenicians uh, chart the island? Were they visiting different uh, beaches to make exchange? Uh, and there's Davros, which is a, a, a Greek uh, uh, ship as well. We have a lot of words. We are 18 grandmothers ago, 80, 40. If we go back to the Phoenician times, it's 80. And if the words have been going down from mother to son, mother to son, Ulit, going in, it's not very far away. Already the Maltese, the Academy, they say we have nothing to do with the Phoenicians. Nothing. And I don't know how they got this conclusion. To say that we have no proof or they we don't know what they spoke, that I understand. But to say nothing, I think it is a disservice to what was found here the, the artifacts, the Venetian artifacts that were out here. Somehow, the people, even if they were wiped off here, who came back? Who came back? And why do you speak a Semitic language? Why? There were the Romans, there were the Normans, there were so many people came. But yet, our language is very Semitic. The letter sounds. Jbart. Jbart is to collect power. And that's what the, uh, the Lebanese say, Jbart is power. A Bahri is Habe, you Habe, Habe, Habe. Ba'ra, Aleph. Aleph, 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 and Ba'ra. They are all words which are using today. Um is mother. Now, Misir, I thought it was French. From the noun M Sa. Stipel Sa, Mirandi. Massa. Sa, I am the protector of the family. We have a lot, and when we speak with Lebanese, we are guides. 
We need a lot of Lebanese, and they and even Egyptians, and even there were some sailors that went to Yemen from the British Navy because we, we were the British, we were the British, a lot of Maltese travel, and they could communicate with Yemeni, and Yemeni stems from Phoenicia as well, and they cannot say in intonation we are still very close to Lebanon, even intonation. Tunisia, who were they? Who were the Tunisians? They were Carter. In Sicily, who were they? Even the boat that they found. It was enumerated. So the Phoenicians were doing mass production of ships. They were numbered planks by planks. All right? So I believe that we have a very good connection. Even DNA, 5%, I don't know how to calculate it. But 5%, I'm a mathematician. Is Zerria Zaira? Zerria Zaira. And it grows. 5% is a lot. I don't expect after people coming here, thousands and one, one, two, three, four, five coming in. 5% is a lot. I'm not expecting 100%. Come on. Even the local language, they say we have nothing local with the past. If our language there was Nino Cremona, who was in Tunis, and he copied the Arabic grammar, and he made the Maltese and Maltese grammar local today. How can today Maltese be the same as Punic? The Punic were the stemming of the word love, love. I think there is a lot of commonality here. No, no, no. I am, I am fascinated. I am yeah. living at the Maltese Academia that they shut me down even from Facebook. Okay, and I'm not telling you now. No, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, the academia, yeah. because they want to promote, all right, let them promote the Maltese language. I'm not against the Maltese language. Let's make structure on what in that. I am with the academy. I'm sure the people here are very interested in what you're saying. I'm no, no, definitely... but, but I, am, I have a fixation. Uh -huh. I have a fixation. Are, er, West, Maghreb, West, Algarve, Portugal. It's West. I just, I just would like to, oh, sorry, to I just would like to, yeah, to, to see that oh, there are more questions. But maybe, but that, maybe somebody from the panel would like to respond or find, the, you know, kind of how would people communicate with you, or if there are interests that people want to develop with you, how would they reach you? How would they? When I listen to this intervention, and thanks for the intervention. I think uh, that we have the confirmation that uh, our route is not a, a traditional route. Because our heritage is the invisible heritage. Because uh, the Phoenicians, as an archaeological remain, we haven't. We have Mozia, we have another little place in Tunisia, but uh, for the Mediterranean, Lebanon, all the Phoenician cities are down, are under the sea. We have a Roman heritage. So, it's very interesting that everywhere people understand that they are Phoenician, new Phoenicians, but only because they want to present their identity. We realized some years ago a reportage with the master of intuitive journalism of the Milan universities, university. We go around from Lebanon to Spain. We go with the students to interview people everywhere. What it means to be Phoenicians? One man in the Cadiz, Cadiz Evans, and he Phoenicians because it's the level under the city, said that if you cut my blood, is Phoenicians. So it means that today to be Phoenicians is a reality. It's incredible that after 2000 here, we can speak to all the countries of the Mediterranean to speak about the Phoenicians as today Phoenicians. So this is our slogan we are finding new Phoenicians to develop the better of the Mediterranean. Yes, but I mean, if I may say something, uh, in Malta we have Phoenician uh, artifacts or uh, Phoenician uh, archaeology. One of the walls of the Dina is said to be Phoenician from the time that it was built, because it was built by Phoenicians. Sure. The Dina was built by Phoenicians, and there is still one wall standing. And there are found also some remains in Rabat, uh, adjacent to uh, the Roman villa, which we call the Roma Domus, Domus Romana. Next to it, in, in that area, which is unbuilt, there are Punic remains, so they are Phoenicians. I speak about the, when you go in Rome, you can see the Roman heritage. When you're in Athens, you can see that Greek heritage. Yeah. The Phoenicians is very few uh, things so respect to the civilization so of Cassidy. So
Yeah, that's Spanish. <laughs> 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 but the problem is that the stone is the atmosphere. We can find the atmosphere of the Phoenicians, the people well, today. The boats, the boats yes, are. our gastronomy is Phoenicians. The base, the Phoenicians gastronomy, there are a lot of studies about it, demonstrated that all that we have today is heritage of the Phoenicians. Some words, only words, alphabet, olive oil, wine. Sad, yeah, oh, tuna yeah. fish. Oh, yeah. All those elements come from the Phoenician civilization before than the Greeks. So when we speak about the Phoenician, we are speaking, we are talking about the Mediterranean today. So this is the message. Yes. There's a, there's a question. Um, I don't know if it had ever been discussed, but in this process of uh, uh, validating heritage and heritage not as just as heritage sites, but also the people, the local culture. Um, has, it, has there ever been an initiative to improve at the agriculture of these, of this route? Because mm -hmm. the stable diet of the Mediterranean in the classical period, the Phoenician, it was grain, oil, oil, and wine. <laughs> and I think that's what makes the Mediterranean Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. Bacon mm -hmm. diet based on this. And uh, um, I think improving the agriculture of these countries. You know, Sicily was always the, for the Romans, was the granary of the empire. Um, and also the North African coast, very important for the oil and, and the grain. Now coming into um, Europe uh, was allowed to survive based on the products coming from North Africa and the, the Mediterranean basin. So in this journey in this uh, program, project, to improve tourism and um, the, the value we give to heritage. Has there ever been a project uh, directed to improving agriculture? Mm. <laughs> so, in my little presentation, I cannot explain all our projects, our action. One of the action is based on the Mediterranean diet. And we create the taste maps. For each territory of Mediterranean, we're preparing a selection of the typical um, agricultural products to present not only the product, because we have a lot of uh, presentation about uh, our food everywhere, but especially the productors that can tell what is their work, why they um, produce this one, the history of the enterprise, and so on, and the restaurant that can transform these uh, products in a food, a typical food because uh, we have a big uh, confusion about it. We don't know if the pizza is American or Mediterranean, we don't know if it's a couscous. So we have to, to establish what is an entity in the food sector or in the production of this territory. Uh, but uh, remember that the, the globalization, right? we receive grain from uh, Ukraine or from uh, South America, so it's very difficult to understand what it means today typical product is a, a problem. But we can work especially for the local community to have to be proud of their identity, of their product, of their history. Because when we speak about uh, the, the agricultural product, we are speaking about the families. Because every family has an history linked with the product. So, all the fishermen, for example. It, it is, sorry, just, yeah, question? Yes, about um, you talking about food. Uh, the fish fish in the Mediterranean. It's in a very sad situation. Um, perhaps you can, uh, did, you, did you think of uh, doing something with the sea in particular? And perhaps nature reserves in the sea to promote the, the reproduction and the rebreeding of, of fish? Because, you know, fish, fish farms are okay, they are all okay, but I think we need to re-establish the, the okay. wild, the wild species, if possible. I mean, if you have an idea of focusing on the, on the sea. You give us a bigger responsibility now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we have a strategy about the environment. Ah. We put together all of the geoparks, natural reserve, sea reserve, and so on, to develop a strategy, a common strategy. Our, our goal is to help the territory to develop their strategy in connection with the other strategy. Because when we have, uh, and come from Sicily, a strategy in Sicily, but the fine fishermen go to Tunisia to catch fish, yeah. isn't a strategy. Yeah. It's only a, a play to arrive where they can arrive 
with the normal uh, tools. But in this case, the network of the net, we call it a net, um, natural network, is a, a tool to put together this one. Another vision of the problem is the future of the fish nets. So fish net, the farm net, sorry, is the network of the fl uh, flats, is the organization of territory that work with the sea, ask us to collaborate to present a new kind of work for the fishermen. Mm. So as in the agriculture, we have the agri-tourism, so people can do tourism by their heritage, by their house and so on. So the fishermen can work about the sea, not only to catch fish, but to present the sea. We arrived some years ago a European project about uh, the fishermen as uh, guides of the coast, the landscape. Now we are preparing a network of the Mediterranean of uh, a museum of the sea. So where are fishermen's places? They can uh, work together with others, villages and so on that are fishermen, to develop this model. Uh, I have an example in Spain, in Barcelona, close to Barcelona, that is a, a Disney park about the Mediterranean fishermen. There, there wasn't before, it was created now. So we have the fisherman's village, we don't do anything. So our work is to present the authenticity of this one, present the history of the places, and all this uh, around the culture of the sea, because every ancient work have an history, have a, an heritage to promote. So and for the tourist sector, this is wonderful. I live in a fisherman's village. The fisherman host a guest, have a guest that go on the sea by the little uh, ships, present their work, present their landscape, they stay together, they go to present their food, typical food of the fishermen, and begin a, a, a link between tourism and heritage. This is very interesting. It can be an opportunity for the fishermen to not take only fish, because the problem is real. Yeah, yeah. I, I, sorry, I get the impression that when you're using the word Phoenician, but you're also saying something more than simply identity, or that I am something because I am not something else. But I get the impression that you're also saying that in the Mediterranean there is a memory of how people can relate to each other, not in a way that is dominating or violent. Or, and I think you're saying there is a memory that is possibly in our blood of how we can relate to each other peacefully through or encounter each other through, through other ways, mm -hmm. rather than dominating colonization or... Um, and and I, don't, I, I don't know what... Um, and, and you've also have said, this is not something of the past, this is also something that we're doing today, even though maybe at face value, violence seems to be dominating. I know you want to elaborate a little bit on the reality of that in the work that you're doing today. Mm -hmm. sure. First of all, thank you very much for this important inquiries and questions that you are raising here. Uh, if I can sum up the significant part on the language or on the communication tool, language of the communication tool, to the gastronomy, to the agriculture, to the fisherman's life, uh, part of what we are doing today, developing what we call smart ways, as we are doing in Lebanon, smart ways Lebanon, among all the Phoenician cities on the coast and on the inland. We are engaging the wine